Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Just like the thumbnail suggests, we're gonna take a look at my crypto buying spree and we're gonna talk about what I bought, why I bought it, and exactly how much I bought and how things are going. Also, we're gonna take a look at uh, how everything's going with uh, Bitcoin and El Salvador as people are paying for everything in the Lightning Network and it's very fast. However, there are some bugs to fix and we're gonna go over what's going on with Bitcoin, Lightning, and Cardano. And also we'll wrap it up with my appearance at Market Rebellion, where we talked to some insiders and they gave us a, just a sneak peek at what we think is going to happen in uh, the next couple of months, uh, manipulation, and uh, also a lot of different liquidations that were going on. And this to me was the best part. And finally, we got to talk about Rob Gronkowski getting into crypto. So we'll go over all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So just so you know, uh, we had a little bit of a, another dip today and uh, it was weird because I, I usually sleep pretty hard, but uh, for some reason I was up at uh, 2.30, 2.20 in the morning and uh, mostly because my wife was snoring. That's really what it happened. And uh, from there, I just you know have to take a look at what's going on in the market and boom, it was just a big wipeout. So right now we're not doing too bad. We're up 1.53% in the last 24 hours. Market cap is 2.08 trillion. And uh, things are not so shabby. We are taking a look at the daily sentiment. We're at 46 over 100. Daily average daily sentiment for crypto in general is 45 over 100. And we're using trade the chain sentiment analysis. If you're looking for sentiment analysis to add to your technical analysis and fundamental, just look in the description below. There's a link that looks just like this, and you can sign up for this service called Trade the Chain. So uh, this is what we have. And we got a Bitcoin price of 46,390. On top of that, I mean, the sentiments, uh, what we can see is that Bitcoin, the sentiment is in, is in green. And then the price is in blue. And after that big hit, last couple of uh, days, we've seen them both happen. Uh, we've seen the sentiment kind of drop, but Bitcoin price has remained pretty stable and it's been looking pretty good as far as what's going on. And then uh, as far as like the coins, uh, what is going on as far as uh, the price action itself? I mean, we've got Ethereum 3,500, Cardano 2.43. And over the last 24 hours, it's kind of moved sideways, except for Solana. Solana, yet again, is up to uh, up 14% in the last 24 hours. Man, I'm glad I bought that one. And then some other things. 2% uh, up for Litecoin, crazy. Terra, 7%. 36% for Algorand, and also uh, in conjunction with Trade the Chain, uh, the sentiment token itself is up 31%. Now it's at a, at a dime. That's crazy. So uh, also just be aware, everything I talk about, I am uh, I'm pretty biased because I own them. So just take that as it were. But hey, uh, everything's up. I mean, Solana, Sentiment, Cardano, eh, not too bad. But uh, the big thing uh, for me is just talking about these dips and how to really just shake them off and what you should do or what I'm doing. I can't tell you what to do because I'm not a, a financial uh, advisor. And this is just financial opinion on a financial advice. But really just, if you really think about it, it just comes down to this. This is, uh, this is how you should treat all dips. You just kind of just get in there, not a big deal, and then just shake them off like my dog Chloe does. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, that's really what it comes down to. And if you can do that and not get so caught up in the different price action, then you can be okay. It's like Peter Lynch said, uh, you can actually, uh, anybody who's got the intelligence to get into the stock market and of course cryptocurrency, but it's the ones that can stomach it are the ones that are gonna do pretty good. So here's what happened. I sent the tweet out roughly about 2.55 in the morning today. And here were the prices, dot 26.50, Doge, or Cardano, $2.30, Solana, $1.58, uh, Ethereum, $3.50, and everything was just down. And again, it was just one of those, those days I usually sleep, I mean, till like at least 5.36, but I was just up early. And I was like, man, uh, what I said here is, uh, I can't sleep, everything's down 10, 20%, I can't let that slide. And I said, I just bought Dot, uh, Chainlink, Chili's, and Solana. And why did I buy all these things? Well, first of all, these are products that I believe in. I already own them and they were up, they were down massively. I mean, I think like Chili was down like 21% or something crazy like that in 24 hours. Solana, which was never, has never been down, was also down big time. So I was like, I got to get these. And then on top of that, um, I bought that, uh, like I said, around, I don't know, probably 2.40 in the morning. And then I also 
uh, sent out a tweet to like 10 minutes later, go, yeah, I also picked up uh, Matic, Polygon, and Avalanche. Again, so I bought six different projects and these are all products that I've already been uh, bought into. I've done some deep dives with them on my own research. I've done, uh, you know, my due diligence. So I had no problems buying them now because I'm like, there's no reason, nothing really changed. Just a bunch of whales uh, manipulating the market. That's really what it came down to. So uh, for me, I'm like, might as well give it a roll of dice and see what happens. So this is how much I bought. And before I show you this, I just wanna, I don't usually show the things that I buy or the amounts that I buy, but I feel like it's necessary because I mean, who you who you watching on YouTube, right? People say, oh, I do this and I do that. And really, do you really, you know, are, are, are you doing these things that you say you're doing? Uh, because I mean, look, trust is a commodity you just can't buy. And uh, the reason why you watch this channel is because you trust me to give you the best information and that I'm being honest. So I just want to show you that this is what I bought and I bought a lot. And uh, some people were asking me like, hey, should I, cause like in May there was a dip and a dip and a dip and a dip. So should I just buy this dip? I'm like, I can't tell you what to do. But what I'm doing is I'm learning from the last dip. I'm not putting everything in because I took a little bit of profits as things were going up, which is reasonable. And like my friend CJ always says, keep some powder on the sidelines, which I did. And uh, when the time was right, there was a big dip, 20%, 18 to 21%. I started to buy off. And I just, uh, you can, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna put everything into it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it up into thirds or maybe even fourths. And then just, uh, cause if there's another dip coming, cause September is a crazy month, uh, statistically, this is what I will probably do and uh, just kind of break it down and start to buy things uh, as things come into me. So if you take a look at it, this was around the time that I bought all these things, around 2.40 in the morning, somewhere around there, 2.40-ish, right? And the dip price was, uh, it was 35 bucks. Let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. So dip price was $35 for Avalanche, a buck 29 for Matic, Chili's 32 cents, 26.44 for Chainlink, Dot 26.50 and Solana was 158. And I don't know, uh, I made this about an hour ago, so this is what the prices are now, but probably higher or less, I don't know. But um, this is what we're at right now. And this is what I did because I feel like, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I have no idea. I don't know what's gonna happen next week or next month or, I mean, really nobody does. Because they do tell you that they're full of it. So I just feel, or I just tend to take a look at trends and kind of see where things are going. Every single bank out there is getting into crypto. Governments are getting into crypto. I mean, we've got huge hedge funds. We've got pensions. Uh, we've got, uh, I mean, online retailers getting into it. Heck, we've even got PayPal offering it to, to all their services. Uh, do you not think this is going to do pretty well? I think so. And I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. And I think this is where I should be investing. Now, again, this is not investment advice. It's just investment opinion. This is what works for me. My goals are not your goals. So just remember that and uh, do your own diligence and research. And that is essentially what's going on. So that is it for that piece. Now let's uh, talk about Bitcoin and El Salvador. So I never thought I would see the day where Bitcoin would be this lightning fast, pun intended. So I want you to watch this video real quick, just to get the grasp the brevity or the breadth of what is going on in El Salvador, because uh, this to me was pretty amazing how fast transactions are going on the Lightning Network. So just uh, check this out. Let me tell you, when I, when I go to any store, Home Depot, Walmart, Lowe's, whatever else, uh, it's not moving that fast for my Visa card. So that was pretty amazing. I never thought I was today where Bitcoin would be used as a cryptocurrency. I was wrong. And uh, I always, always talk about it as a store of value, but uh, here we are and me eating crow and I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm happy I'm wrong. And uh, that's exactly what's happening as far as like very, you know, quickness in El Salvador. However, there is a flip side of that token about what's going on. And this can only happen with adoption and really getting into it and getting things done. This is a, this is a tweet from Matt Alberg. He documents uh, Bitcoin adoption. 
and uh, you can follow him on Twitter. I'll link him in the description. But here's what he says. He goes, I mean, first of all, the, the first tweets were all like, it's very positive, it's very good, it's doing very well. People are, you know, accepting it. Uh, there is one thing though about the president. Um, they don't really like him too much. They seem as very authoritarian. So there's been some protests, yes, and people aren't too happy with it, but they're not really sure is it is it because they don't like the president or just don't like Bitcoin. Usually it's just because they don't like the president, whatever the president says, hey, whatever. So this is what Matt was talking about. And when he talks about this, he goes, these are the issues that we see so far. Uh, the Lightning invoice is generated by uh, Chivo. Chivo, that's the app given uh, forth by the government for the people. Where they give them $30 worth of Bitcoin so they can actually use it and buy crypto in El Salvador or actually pay for everything in Bitcoin in uh, El Salvador. Uh, contains the full legal name of the creator of the invoice. This seems to me like a privacy issue. He also says three more things. There's a potential bug when pasting in a Lightning invoice, which already has a number of sats required. The Chivo app asks the users to manually input the amount being sent. And when uh, it's inputted manually, the payment throws error. No se, pu no se puede realizar esta operación undefined, undefined. Another bug, uh, Chivo appears to have a minimum send amount for both on-chain and Lightning. We feel this was created for on-chain Bitcoin, but was mistakenly applied to Lightning. And then two more, another bug, LN invoices not really working too well. Uh, when sending on-chain Bitcoin, bit refill asks the user to send a certain amount, 0 0.0001, and the user in Chivo inputs a number, but then afterwards, the Chivo takes the fee from that, and you receive less. It's a non-standard behavior. The fee should instead be deducted from the remaining balance in the Chivo, Chivo's user app, not the amount being sent. And the reason why I talk about this is very simple. It's because no matter how much you plan and really get things going, you got to kind of just get out there and do it, right? I mean, you can't, you can't be an armchair quarterback. You got to get out there and just break a few eggs. And uh, hopefully all the different planning, you minimize the amount of breakage, right? Talking to you DeFi projects. So when this happens, just realize that, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. And uh, they'll probably fix it in a little bit of bugs, which leads me to my next point, because there was an issue coming about as far as with Cardano and the mainnet launch. They're going to the testnet right now. On September 12th, they're going to launch the mainnet. And just so you know, there was an issue, which people were talking about, uh, with uh, MinSwap. And what happened real quick, it talks about Cardano struggles with UTXOs, DAP errors, and congestion issues. And then MinSwap was a DAP that ran into these issues with uh, Cardano. And then immediately everybody says, it's broken, it sucks, it's awful. It's the same thing with like the thing we just talked about with the Lightning Network and the different app from, from, from Chivo, whatever else. It's not that it's broke, it just needs a little bit uh, of configuration. And Charles is like, well, there's really not that much we can do. So to break this down, I'm going to bring in my buddy, uh, Hashoshi, on Friday around 4 o'clock. We're going to do a quick little show, and he's going to talk about it before the mainnet launch for Cardano. And then, so for all these things, just think about the different problems that we have with, with blockchain and congestion and gas fees and everything else. That just shows to me that we're super early, and we're in the right place at the right time. So just take it with a grain of salt. I think there's a lot of big things on the horizon. All right. And then uh, to finish up, this was fun. This was really fun. This is, let me blow this up so you can see. Ah, man, I missed it. So this is, uh, this is me, CJ Monty, and that's John Najarian over there at uh, Market Rebellion. And what we got to just talk about, which was pretty cool, was all the things that are going on in the marketplace. And one of the things that, that John brought up was about liquidation. You see that thing called Bybit? Bybit. This is people going there for leverage positions, 10, 50, 100x, or whatever else it is. I think it's around 50x. And it's always the same thing. Buy bit, buy bit, buy bit, buy bit. And this is what causes that cascade effect, that waterfall effect. Everything just kind of drops to the ground. I'm not going to preach, but I'm just going to preach a little bit. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing as far as like with leverage trades, stop doing it because it screws up the whole market. That's just my two cents. You're welcome to do whatever what you want to do. We do live in a free society. We're not in China. So uh, that is what it is. I just see like Bybit's the same thing every single time. And everybody that I see like going talking about Bybit, like you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. No, people can't do it. You're free to make your own choices. But I'm just telling you, take my advice and stop leverage trading up to the hilt if you don't have the money or the experience it just doesn't make any sense so that was that little piece there i don't want to break uh, crush a dead horse and then uh we got into price predictions or where the market is going in uh q4 and john started first and he says look i think uh bitcoin's going around 80 90 000. i think the market's going to do very well 
And then uh, Monty and CJ pretty much agree. They go, yeah, it's uh, you know pretty much the same exact thing. And then also I got to ask uh, John Najarian there a quick question about, which was, this is John looking surprised, like, hey, John, uh, I know you uh, have been around for a while, so tell us stories about manipulation because people don't believe me that manipulation is going on. First of all, before I tell you what he said, uh, this is John, okay? Remember the CBOE, well, former Chicago Bears player, right? NS, uh, New York Stock Exchange, CME and CBOT, worked as a floor trader for 25 years. 25 years as a floor trader, I guarantee he's got a ton of stories. Uh, in 1990, he found a Mercury Trading, sold in 2004 to Citadel, uh, largest hedge funds. Then in 2005, he created Option Monster, sold Trade Trade Monster, which goes Option Mon Monster, to E-Trade for $750 million in 2016. So look, uh, John here, he's got a lot of stories. He's got a lot of stories to tell, and I asked him about manipulation. And he told this whopper of a story about spoofing and sell orders and buy orders and dark fill and liquidity. And I'm like, Oh my God. So I'm just going to have you watch it and have the man from the inside explain to you. This is like a do not miss. When you see this, you're going to know why I'm not a big trader and maybe it'll scare the bejesus out of you and to stop doing the craziness. Okay. And that's, that's it. I will link that, uh, that video in the description below. And lastly, I just want to talk about <laughs> sweet Mary and Joseph, Rob Gronkowski. Uh, if you're not from the States, he's a big time NFL player and, uh, everybody loves Gronk. Everybody loves Gronk. And he just got picked up by Voyager and he did a commercial for them. And basically it's like this. I'm going to link his, you can find him, Rob. I mean, he's everywhere on Twitter, but he's given away uh, crypto. He's given away 25,000 in Bitcoin and the VGX token to win one of $20,000 prize. Just tag your friend hashtag new best friend. I got a bunch of these tags and then follow Rob and invest Voyager. And that's all I got to do. And then the video itself is pretty funny. It's just him scratching Dogecoin and talking about Doge for a little bit and talking about <laughs> cryptocurrency. But this is what mass adoption looks like. Okay. You have people who are very well known, who have a enormous following on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. He's everywhere. And uh, guess who picked him up? Voyager. All right. So I thought it was a pretty funny, pretty funny video and it's just good for mass adoption. And look, that's it for today. So I know there's a lot of things going on, but there's a lot of things going on. And um, if you like that video, first, I'd like to say thanks for sticking with me if you're all the way to the end. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, a like. If you like these types of videos where we talk about the things that are going on today, just consider subscribing. We do this every single day, talk about what's going on, hopefully to make you uh, better aware. And that's it. So uh, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.